Quantum computers are machines that solve very complex math problems that our regular computers and laptops are just not meant to solve. These math problems are usually related to quantum mechanics, hence the name. These superheroes of the computing world could perform multiple calculations simultaneously and have unmeasurable speeds. Quantum computers also perform math problems based on provided data, and they could even predict future outcomes. One very obvious example of this is our weather forecast system. And don't just think that quantum computers are limited to scientific laboratories and universities. Multi-billion dollar companies like Google, Alibaba, and INQ use quantum computers to keep track of their data. Quantum computers also don't care much about the laws of classic physics and provide multi-dimensional answers to complex algorithms. So, in a way, they're way better than supercomputers and they obviously are a million times faster. A quantum computer of about 2,000 qubit power could cost you over $15 million. You'll have to pay $10,000 for every extra qubit. And let's just say that the more advanced quantum computers become, the bigger threat they pose to our current security systems. Quantum computers could become so advanced that they can get into any profile or bank account with little to no effort, and with our current security, we won't be able to stop them. Quantum computers are not big gray boxes of wires slapped over each other. In fact, a lot of people compare quantum computers to chandeliers. This computer has many copper wires and tubes, making it hard not to look twice. All these wires are connected to a steel cylinder, and when the quantum computer is working, it's usually placed into a really cold vacuum. Some people also compare quantum computers to wedding cakes because of its several tiers. There are also pumps in many quantum computers that keep it cool and dandy while the computer solves unimaginable math problems. The chip with which all the wires are connected needs to be at a perfect temperature in very stable conditions. For instance, they can't really afford to have any thermal, electric, or even magnetic noise near the chip. The chip is pretty much useless at room temperature, so it has to operate at unbelievably cold temperatures. Quantum computers are complex, and understanding them is very similar to grasping rocket science. Basically, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Classical computers just measure data in zeros and ones, limiting their calculation ability. However, a quantum computer performs calculations even before measuring the state of objects, so it goes through data in a faster and more efficient manner. The building block of quantum computers is a quantum data plane. It's the structure where qubits are stored. It also measures the qubits and controls the gate system to move them from one place to another. There's also an elaborate wiring system in this section that connects two or more qubits together. Then comes the control and measurement plane. This is the structure that controls and processes signals. These signals indicate the actions to be performed on the qubits. Even if there's a slight signal error, it could render all the mathematical calculations completely moot and useless. Then, we also have a control processor plane, which controls the quantum gate and measurement of qubits. It also determines a sequence so a specific algorithm is implemented. It also runs the correct algorithm, so if there are any errors, they can be tackled. Superposition also plays a key role in quantum computers. Superposition is a state in which the particles are all in the states combined. These particles keep moving and the quantum computer observes and measures each particle. Superposition doesn't just look at particles in one way, but rather sees them as a combination of all the possible forms. As qubits remain in the superposition, they provide computational power to the quantum computer. When a user puts certain algorithms in the quantum computer, it calculates and forms different patterns. It also starts gathering data, performing calculations, and reaching a possible outcome. But it's not that easy to get a quantum computer and get it to work. It's mainly because these highly functional computers are very high maintenance and won't just sit around in the corner like your laptop. You would have to get a vacuum where you can provide the quantum computer with a temperature that's even above absolute zero. Some quantum computers in the world use so-cold temperatures that this temperature is not even found in the entire universe, not even in outer space, probably in Elsa's castle, but that's another debate. So yeah, quantum computers work at insane temperatures and thrive at the coldest temperature in the entire universe. This temperature helps in keeping the qubits in a quantum state. And the longer these qubits are in this state, the faster all calculations will be performed and the sooner they'll get the results. So, until you're ready to get frostbite accidentally, don't even think about getting this computer. 
The quantum computer also has dilution refrigerators that could take its temperature to as low as 1 Kelvin and even below that. These systems could be very complex and expensive, which any regular Joe won't be able to afford. If a quantum computer is not getting enough cold, it's not going to end well, and your multi-million dollar computer can even crash, which is the last thing you want. So yes, not everyone can own a quantum computer, but that doesn't mean these computers will only be limited to labs and experimental institutions. Since Google started using a quantum computer, more businesses are also considering their usage. It won't be long until all the big corporate companies will be using quantum computers, and it will save time and a lot of money. Calculations that regular computers take hours or even days to perform could be done in a few minutes. And by the looks of it, quantum computers' future seems very bright. Quantum computing can have implications in every field, from finance to health and transport to e-commerce. It's the reason why predictions are that the global quantum computing industry can easily reach $125 billion by 2030. Quantum computers can completely change a country's economy and could make it stronger than any other superpower. So it's probably the reason why the US doesn't want China to get ahead in quantum computing, because if this technology gets into the wrong hands, it could do a lot of damage. Researchers also believe that the only way forward for AI is quantum computing. So it won't be wrong to say that since the dawn of the internet, quantum computing would be the biggest revolution that will completely change how we see the world. So why the US doesn't want China to have advanced quantum technology and why do we know so little about quantum computers? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. And while you're at it, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button for the latest tech updates. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, get your game on!